Okay, we're going to talk about bones of the foot and answer the questions. What bones form the foot? What are their primary bony landmarks? And what are some reasons to learn about them? Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Morton, and I'm the noted anatomist. So let's superimpose the bones onto this uh, photograph and then twist it. So now we're looking at a superior or dorsal view of the foot on the right side. And the bones of the foot consist of tarsals, metatarsals, and phalanges. And so let's take a look at each one of these and start with tarsals first. And tarsals is Latin for ankle. And there are seven tarsal bones. And let's talk about each one of them, starting with the talus. And the talus is, uh, the etymology is for slope or small hill because that's what the top surface is formed like on the talus. And let's look at the right ankle in this anterior view, and there's the talus. And then see how it's got bones on the side, like the lateral malleolus of the fibula and the medial malleolus of the tibia. And between that, it forms this joint. So here we have now, I'm just going to put the lateral LM malleolus and MM medial malleolus with the talus in between. There's this joint. It's called the tibio Taylor joint, and it's a mortise joint, and it allows for dorsi and plantar flexion motions like this. Next, we have the calcaneus, and the calcaneus is Latin for heel bone because when we look in surface anatomy, ta da! There's the heel bone or the calcaneus. And so if we then take this medial view of the foot and blow it up, shing, there is the calcaneus. And the calcaneus has a number of tendons that attach to it, one of which is the calcaneal tendon, a.k.a. Achilles tendon, a.k.a. tendocalcaneus. And that tendon is where the gastrocnemius and soleus muscles anchor to the calcaneus. We also have the flexor retinaculum coursing from the medial malleolus to the calcaneus, and it forms the roof of the tarsal tunnel where the posterior tibial artery and vein and the tibial nerve course from the posterior part of the leg through the tarsal tunnel into the plantar surface of the foot. And then on the bottom of the foot, we have the plantar aponeurosis. And I'm going to show an illustration I did in graduate school few years ago. And the plantar aponeurosis is showing this very dense collagenous connective tissue that forms between the calcaneus and the, the metatarsals. It helps give great support to the foot and also helps with the windless mechanism of providing support to the arches of the, of the foot. Um, here's another medial view of the calcaneus. And there's a structure here called the sustentaculum tali. And this bony protuberance has a number of ligaments, like the spring ligament and the deltoid ligaments that attach to it. And then underneath it is where the flexor hallucis longus tendon courses from the back of the leg to the plantar surface of the foot. And there it is from a posterior view. You see that shelf-like structure. Um, let's now talk about the subtalar joint. So there in green is the talus, and in orange is the calcaneus, and then in between is a joint. That's why it's appropriately also called the talocalcaneal joint. And this joint is important because it's what allows for inversion and eversion movements of the ankle. All right, next is the navicular, and it's articulating um, posteriorly with um, the calcaneus as well as the talus and anteriorly with the cuneiform bones. And it is Latin for boat because if we take a look at this and then turn it around, it kind of looks like a boat, like an upside down boat like this, like that. Now, you may remember from the carpal bones that there's another bone in the wrist that also goes by boat. And so there used to be a bone in the wrist for the carpals called the navicular. But then anatomists are like, we can't have two navicular bones in the ankle and wrist. So why don't we take the one in the wrist and we'll call it scaphoid, which is Greek for boat, navicular, Latin for boat. All right. Next, we have the cuneiforms that um, the cuneiform bones are Latin for wedge shaped for the way that they're shaped. And there's three of them. There's a medial cuneiform that's closest to the medial of the foot, then the intermediate and lateral cuneiform bones. And finally, uh, there's the cuboid bone, which is Greek for cube shape that articulates with the cuneiforms and the calcaneus and the navicular bone. Um, and there we have now our seven tarsal bones. Next, we're going to go to metatarsals. And metatarsals gets its name for Latin for after the ankle or next in line. So that, that prefix meta, after, next after the tarsals. And there are five metatarsal bones. The first one is the one that articulates with the big toe, and then second, third, fourth, and fifth metatarsal bones. And these bones um, have particular 
um, function in attachment for ligaments, for tendons, and for helping to form the arches of the foot. Metatarsals. And each metatarsal has a head and a base. And then finally, we have the phalanges. And the phalanges, there are five of them. The first phalange is known as the hallux, which is Latin for great toe. This is your big toe. And then we have the second, third, fourth, and fifth phalanges. And we take two through five, shing, they're called the lesser toes. And they're lesser toes because they're not as big as the big toe. I kind of feel bad because it almost gives them a complex. They're the lesser toes next to the great toe. Now, the great toe has a proximal and a distal phalange, whereas all the lesser toes have proximal, middle, and distal. And that, my friends, is an overview of the bones of the foot in a nutshell.